What's up guys? It's Chris. And Amanda. We've been traveling the world for about three months now, but here today we want to tell you guys about one of our favorite places so far, Lima, Peru. think of going to Peru until we li literally just watched some YouTube videos, saw how good the food looked, and we we're just like, yeah, let's just get go to Peru for food. Like, no Machu Picchu, no travel, no like sightseeing. So we started off in Costa Rica. We flew down from San Jose, and the place where we decided to stay was Selena Hostels. We thought that we would be saving money by sharing a bathroom, but Everywhere we stayed in hostels, we ended up just kind of upgrading anyways. We'll party with you, but we don't want to share a bathroom with you. Yeah. Yeah, so it's basically a hotel room with all of these other amenities like a restaurant, a bar, activities, events, like guided tours. Almost every night they had really good music, they had performances. <laughs> Yeah, the Lima Salino was probably our favorite. It had like the best events, the most fun vibe, and the best local drink that we've had so far for Pisco Sours. The most efficient type of drink. Taste is really good and very sufficiently strong. So we only had like two the first night we were there and we were like having a great time. <laughs> so we discovered one of our favorite drinks so far on this trip, Pisco Sours. The second day we were in Lima, we signed up for a guided tour. So we got it through Selena and we paid $15 for it. Like we've like learned that other people from like other hostels were on this tour also. Learned that they didn't pay for this tour. We were the only people who had to pay for this tour. We were about to go on like a walking tour. Kind of very organized with Selena. <laughs> no idea what's going on. They ended up realizing that we were the people who paid. So then we ended up getting our own separate tour guide. Our First. tour guide wasn't like a great tour guide. Her pacing wasn't great. It was kind of hard to understand her. That's not her fault. But she also told us it was only going to be like like two hours, and it ended up being like five hours. Yeah, I'm a history teacher, so <laughs> if I'm bored. It's bad. <laughs> so, but downtown, in my opinion, was really, really cool. So we went to several plazas. Um, the final one that we went to was really cool. It was the National Palace. We saw the changing of the guard there. <laughs> the buildings were just absolutely gorgeous a lot of history in downtown so if you're in Lima and you want to see the layers and layers of history of the city downtown is definitely the place to go on the tour that we went to um, one of the cool highlights was at the end um, our tour guide took us to this really old Franciscan monastery this place had just beautiful paintings and so I had no idea that like a monastery would be so ornate inside there was like these beautiful ceilings. The last part that we went to in this monastery was a crypt. Underground crypt. Yeah, so we like crept down into like these like dark, I don't know, underground pits almost. And then underneath were just rows and rows of human remains. We we're like second guessing if it was even real. It gave us like Indiana Jones vibes, just seeing like so many bones. We, they're just like in like pits and pits and then also arranged in like designs and we had to look it up. It, it was like 70,000 human remains. Like, yeah, really got a spooky, creepy stuff if you're into that. The second barrio that we went to visit was Barranco. Barranco is kind of neighboring Miraflores. We did just walk there. Right away, once you cross over to Barranco, it has a very, very different feel from Miraflores. So Barranco has like a really like rough vibe, kind of like everyday people vibe. Like it was like, like a 
kind of older. You see like more graffiti, like buildings are kind of like a little bit more run down. But then you also have like cute shops and restaurants and like cafes. And there's like, a lot of like street art, like big walls and like murals of like paintings. I always had this thing, like I grew up in like Southern California, Orange County, like grew up near Disneyland with Disneyland. I'll go to places and I'll realize that these are the actual places where Disneyland got its inspiration from, but I'm at the real place and it reminds me of Disneyland. So there, like we were on this roof and we saw like another like rooftop with like I don't know, plants and like lighting and kind of like Pirates of the Caribbean feel like outside. <laughs> I don't know, it kind of reminded me of Disneyland, I just remember seeing that. Huh? Morocco is also where you'll find the Bridge of Sighs. So the Bridge oh, of Sighs is... Not like yeah. Sighs. Yeah, you make a wish, <laughs> and then you hold your breath, you hold hands, and then you walk across this bridge together, and then if you make it across, then the wish will come. Man, I think my wish was like to have like a <laughs> relaxing, peaceful, fun connection with Amanda. <laughs> and then right at the end of the bridge of size, like we get into like a mini argument. That was too bad. Why'd you have to walk so slow? It's more fun. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? No, it's not. It's, it's too like, easy. It's boring as fuck. It's too easy. <laughs> but it looks boring. She's such a critic. She's my biggest critic right now. Always dumping on my party. I thought it would be cool to make it more challenging and like walk slowly across the bridge. Like walking is so boring. No one wants to see like 30 seconds of us walking with her holding our breath. Like that's the content you want to see. <laughs> After the bridge of sighs. <laughs> so let's talk about Miraflores. Miraflores is the place where we stayed. For most of the five days, we spent our time in Miraflores. Miraflores is, like I mentioned, it's a safer neighborhood. You'll find a lot of like fancy cafes, boutiques, more upscale apartments. Miraflores is also really nice because you can walk like just from the neighborhood straight to the beach. And yeah, we spent a day walking out there. It's kind of cool because it reminded us of California. This totally feels like California. It's like cold, kind of hazy. The sun is out. This beach is beautiful and amazing. It's kind of, it just feels like home. It's like very like, except there's a lot of honking. <laughs> we didn't actually go into the beach. We, we didn't know. We couldn't it, figure we out how to get know down. How to get down <laughs> we didn't see any stairs. To the actual <laughs> beach. And then we had completely neglected a few blocks over from our hostel. This really really cool park called Park at Kennedy. Um, that had these beautiful churches and stray cats. Kitties. It's the kitty park. It was abundant stray kitty park. It was like a million stray kitties all over. It was so nice, so cute. And then we stumbled on a place called Mercado San Ramon that had just, it was a food court with a little fancy hipster food places inside. We just walk into the edge of like this market, this indoor market, and there's like a staircase that goes up, and I can see this giant projector, and it's karaoke. And yeah. it's massive. Yeah, it's we're inside this like airplane hangar with like, like this huge <laughs> portrait of like this painting of this lady, Dang. cool art all scattered around. There was like yeah. fruits and vegetables, <laughs> and like maybe like 150 people in there like having a blast. Yeah, like group karaoke. <laughs> Like the the most important part of Lima was the food. Yeah, so we really wanted ceviche. 
Peruvian ceviche is different than Mexican ceviche, by the way. And we went to Punto Azul, the one that seemed like it had more reviews. And it wasn't that great. The fish and like the mixed seafood didn't seem as fresh. I ended up getting this dish. It was just like raw fish drenched in sauce. The sauces were like tomato sauce. It was like pasta sauce. It was like cheesy sauce. And I was just like really disturbed at how like the sauce was on this like raw fish. Was I was so pretty upset. Depressed. back to Loba de Mar and it did not disappoint. I'm way more excited for this um, ceviche place because this is where we went to the first time. in Lima. Wouldn't think just what? like a sandwich with pork. Just like it's pieces bread of pork. pork. It doesn't sound like much, but oh my god, it's like the best sandwich we've ever had. One of the best sandwiches we've ever had. Hey guys, here we are at a little restaurant. It's actually just like a small place called um, El Chinito. Which Not is offensive. probably the first Spanish word that was ever said to me as a kid. Um, and apparently they have really famous uh, pork sandwiches. Sanguiche chicharrones. So, pretty excited actually to try this place. All right, look at this pork already. It's like super juicy and amazing. Let's take a bite. Oh my god, oh my god. It's so juicy. Oh my god, it's good. It's really good. I put the onions, pickled onions, and sauce. Mm. Not good, good, right? Yeah, it's like a Peruvian bun me. Mm. The bread is good. Perfectly fresh and crisp. Not too hard, not too much like doughiness. The pork is super juicy, and the sauce makes it so good. We're gonna need like way more of this sauce. El Chinito. Got some good sandwiches. That word has a different meaning to me now. Now I'm thinking about this. <laughs> and then the other famous dish in Lima in Peruvian cuisine in general is Lomo Saltado. First night we just like walked around and stumbled into a random bar that just was still serving food in like the Saha. middle of the night. It's called Saha. We were having the munchies. We found that this bar was still serving Lomo Saltado best like it was yeah. incredible at this random bar later in our stay there we like trying to find like the best like really highly rated Lomo Soldado <laughs> reviews online and we like really had high expectations for this place Santa who wasn't that great like the the meat was tough it's kind of expensive wasn't that flavorful fries weren't good rice was, I just don't remember it being good at all and it yeah. was yeah, it was weird. Talking about Lomo Saltado, Chinese cuisine in Lima, it's called chifa. We got really curious. We really wanted to try what Chinese food, Chinese food would taste like in Lima. You know, we gave birth to this dish called Lomo Saltado. So we ended up going to, again, a place we researched on Google with thousands yeah. of reviews. That's amazing reviews. We were already kind of skeptical when we walked in. The decorations were like, just like, knickknacks like asian meme. plus there were no asian people there i mean it's the ultimate test of whether an asian restaurant is going to be good they have to be either eating there and in the kitchen and there were none the manager of the restaurant was really 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 making sure that we ordered this dish yeah. that we had never heard of in our entire lives of eating chinese food Fun King Kai. no idea what to expect <laughs> it was literally oh, yeah, every yeah, yeah. asian like dried Asian ingredient that you could get and like veggies, like the stir fry veggies like carrots with like the most generic Asian-y like stir fry sauce. Yeah, so you can always trust Google. Um, it like, tastes pretty Asian. So we just randomly walked over to this place called Pardos. Just roasted chicken, like... Like a chicken. 
didn't have any expectations of this chain like what is this like a Pollo Loco like Deddy's <laughs> I had the idea like yeah I've had chicken before like how, how good could it possibly be best chicken I've ever had like shockingly so <laughs> it's like so juicy and flavorful and then the sauces are like they're so good <laughs> ahi amarillo like aioli type of but I don't know what it is but it's so amazing honestly best yeah. chicken ever pollo <laughs> alla brasa Peruvian chicken. Oh my god. You gotta get on that. The last dish we tried, we got to try it through a friend. So big shout out to my friend Sylvia, who I work with. She introduced us to her sister. Big shout out, big, big, big shout out to Anna Maria. Uh, we spent like a day and a half with her with my very minimal Spanish, like was able to hang out with her who didn't speak any English at all. And still we vibed. It was very magical. grande. <laughs> Uh huh. Mm -hmm. oh. And we asked her, hey, what's your favorite dish? And she said, kui. And if you don't know what kui is, it's guinea pig. Yeah, so she took us out to her favorite guinea pig restaurant. It came out like it's kind of disturbing, the whole guy's there with the head and everything. And it was mind blowing. Yeah. It was so good. Chinese roast pork is the elite of roast pork. Like, it's basically an art to make Chinese roast pork. And this was basically like a mini version of a Chinese roast pork, but maybe even better. <laughs> yeah, like on a roast pork, you get like white meat and dark meat. But on this like guinea pig, it's like all dark meat. <laughs> and like the the skin on the on the guinea pig is just like the perfect crisp part. Like it's so perfect. It's like so juicy and flavorful, amazing. Yeah, she took us to like her spot. Yeah, her spot. Yeah, she stopped us from trying it in other places. She's like, nope, I gotta take you yeah. here. So she personally took us out there Yeah, and it, it did not incredible. disappoint. Highly recommend trying it. I mean, yeah. if you can get past the kind of squeamish, like, yeah, it's a little rodent. Yeah, uh, if you had pet, it's, Chris yeah. used to have guinea pig too, but like sustainable was, and- I wasn't eating my guinea pig, so. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> loved how Peru was just full of amazing food like surprises. All right, so overall Lima was such a nice experience for us. We spent five days there. The city itself, like I said, especially in the areas that we were in, it's very safe. We did a lot of walking around at night. It, I felt like Peruvian people were some of the friendliest people I've ever met. And then I think the stay itself, the five days we spent there were a little bit different from the kind of traveling we had been doing before. Just to like be in a super chill, really safe, <clears throat> like relaxing place. It did remind me of like quiet urban areas of Tokyo, Japan also, just because it felt like clean, the, the wideness of like the sidewalks, the, like, the shops, the apartments. <laughs> That wraps up our video for Lima. Thank you so much for watching guys. Um, hope that was helpful. Definitely, definitely check out Lima. Right now we're in Spain. We have another month in Europe. We're gonna check out four or five other countries. And then after that, we're spending six months in Asia. So if you haven't subscribed yet, hit that subscribe button. I have a lot more to show you guys. So see you, see next, you next time. time.